Hi everyone, welcome to another crochet tutorial with me Laura and today it's going to be a Tunisian crochet tutorial and we're going to be looking at the basket weave stitch. So this basket weave stitch, if I zoom in closer, looks like this and it's made up of knit stitches and purl stitches which does sound an awful lot like knitting but this is actually crochet so let's crack on and show you how to do this stitch. So for this tutorial you are going to need a Tunisian crochet hook. Now a Tunisian crochet hook, if you're new to Tunisian crochet, is a very long crochet hook. It almost looks like a knitting needle and you can get these long straight ones or you can get shorter ones that have plastic tubing uh, that comes off the end. So this is so you can hold lots of loops. So we're going to grab some yarn and I'm just using a DK light wool weight yarn but you can use any yarn that you like. And with that, this actual Tunisian crochet hook is a four millimeter crochet hook. So but you can use any that's suitable for the yarn. We're gonna start off with a slip knot like we always do in crochet. And uh, we're gonna just work some chains to begin with. So we're gonna create our little length of project. Now you need to work for this Tunisian basket weave, you need to work to units of six. So I'm gonna work to the six times table. So two, three, four, five and six so there's our first one next six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve do another six thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen <laughs> 17 and 18. Okay, so I'm going to stop at 18 for this tutorial and uh, we don't need to add any extra chains or anything on the beginning row because this loop here is going to, on our hook, is actually going to count as a stitch for once. So with Tunisian crochet what we're going to do is we're going to work into our second stitch from a hook. So we're not going to count the loop, we are going to count the loop on a hook but not at the moment. So, but that's our first chain and that's our second chain. I'm going to go into that second chain and we're going to grab the yarn and we're going to bring up a loop and we're going to keep it on our hook. So if you're familiar with Tunisian crochet, this will seem very familiar. So we're going to do that all the way across. I'm going to go into the next chain, bring up the yarn, keep that on our hook and do that for every stitch. And you should end up with the same stitch count that you started with. So for me, that'll be 18. So just coming up to the last chain. Keep that on our hook and these should be loose enough that they slide up and down nice and easily. So we should have the same, same stitch count that we began with, so we should have 18 stitches. And what we're going to do now in any pattern for Tunisian crochet, we do a reverse row and uh, as I call it and we to do that we need to yarn over and pull through the first loop only at the very beginning so just through one loop and that's really important to do that uh, but from then on you just yarn over and pull through two loops as if doing a really big stitch so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and do that all the way back to the beginning so this is just a normal first beginning Tunisian crochet row. So this will be the same for pretty much any Tunisian stitch that you do. You'll have to do this initial two rows of just normal Tunisian crochet. So just keep putting through two, yarning over, putting through two until you get back to one loop on your hook. Okay, last two, back to the beginning. So we end up with one loop again. And what you'll see are these little vertical bars, like a little ladder that you've created. And we're gonna be working under those, but we're gonna be doing knit stitches and purl stitches. So not the standard simple stitch. So to do a knit stitch, we never work through this first vertical bar because we already have a loop on our hook and that counts as our first stitch done. So we never work under this first vertical bar. bar. So we find the second one, I'm going to put our hook under that vertical bar. We're going to do a knit stitch first. So we're going to go to the back. So you'll find behind that bar a little hole. It can be very tricky to see, but you should be able to feel it with your hook. So just go to the back. And you bring the yarn through and you bring it to the right of that vertical bar and then keep it 
on your hook. I'm going to do that for the next stitch as well. So we go under the vertical bar, just push to the back and your hook should naturally find that gap. Bring the yarn through to the right of the vertical bar. And because we had a stitch, a loop already, that's going to be our first three knit stitches, even though we didn't really do a knit stitch at the beginning. It's going to count as a knit stitch. Then we're going to do three purl stitches. So to do a purl stitch, we need to bring the yarn down to the front. You can just hold it with your thumb. Then we're going to put our hook under the next vertical bar. But instead of going to the back, we're going to grab the yarn from the bottom. So it's going to wrap that over our hook and bring that. I tend to hold it with my thumb out of the way. It makes it easier to come under the vertical bar. Bring that under the vertical bar, then give it a little pull gently and keep that on your hook and you'll see you've got like this little horizontal bar appear. So you can do that again, keep the yarn at the bottom, use your thumb to keep it out of the way, put your hook onto the next vertical bar, then grab the yarn, so you're coming, wrapping it around this way, and I use my thumb to keep the loop down so it's easier to come under that loop, then give it a little pull and that's another pull stitch. Do that one more time. like so. And then we've got three little pearl stitches. So they look like little pearl stitches in knitting. And then we're going to go back to doing three knit stitches. So we need to move the yarn up to the top and keeping that out of the way, we're going to go under the next vertical bar. And because it's a knit stitch, we're going to go to the back, bring the yarn from the back, bring it to the right of your vertical bar. Do that for the next two. three little knit stitches done and then we bring the yarn down to do the purl stitches so keep that close to your hook find the next vertical bar then bringing wrap the yarn around your hook use your thumb to hold it out of the way bring that under and just pull that tight not too tight but do that for the next three stitches So if you're brand new to doing knit stitches and purl stitches in Tunisian crochet, I recommend practicing each stitch individually for a while and then coming back to this one because you might get a little bit fiddly chopping and changing between purl stitches and knit stitches. But now we're going to move back to a knit stitch. We bring the yarn up to the top and go under the next vertical bar and to the back and do three knit stitches. And repeat this pattern all the way to the end doing three knit stitches, three purl stitches, but we only do two knit stitches at the beginning. And then I'm going to be ending on a purl stitch, so the last three, one, two, and the very last one. You can sometimes end up working into this bit here, so do make sure that this is horizontal with your hook so you can see which is the very last horizontal bar so you don't want to work into that bit by accident so make sure that lines up and then you should be able to see that last vertical bar more clearly and do the same thing and there we go we should have the same stitch count of 18 and then we do a normal reverse row and the reverse rows are identical for any type of Tunisian crochet we just yarn over pull through the first loops do a little chain one to begin do not forget to do that chain one then pull through two until you get to the end back to the beginning <laughs> maybe choose a less stringy yarn <laughs> And you'll find you've created a new set of vertical bars and where you've done knit stitches the vertical bars will be bigger but because we've got that little purl stitch in the way those vertical bars will be a little bit smaller but we're going to follow that pattern now for two more sets of rows so i'm going to do start off with the knit stitches again you can tell the knit stitches because they're bigger and fine go on to the next vertical bar at the top and go to the back and do the same thing again just for the first two though we're going to count that loop 
of the knit stitch. And then we can see we've got little horizontal bars here, so we're going to follow that and do three more purl stitches. Be a little bit more tricky because they're smaller, but same thing applies. Do little purl stitches. So go under the vertical bar, grab the yarn, bring it through. The yarn stays at the front. Then we swap back to knit stitches so the yarn comes to the top. And we go to the back. Bringing it to the right of the vertical bar. And then we swap back to little purl stitches. So we bring the yarn down. <laughs> it's going to be fiddly sometimes. Especially when you've got a camera in front of you. So let's find one, two, three. Don't want to miss that first one. Sometimes doing the first purl stitch after doing knit stitches can be fiddly and then you get into a rhythm because the yarn is in the right place. So you may prefer to do more of one stitch. So you may want to divide it up into four knit stitches and four purl stitches rather than three, just so you're doing more of the same stitch more often. If you do that, just work to units of eight. So you've got four of each stitch or units of 10 if you're doing five of each stitch and so on and so forth. Just repeat that all the way across. And then the last three back to purl stitches. And again, make sure that that's sat nicely horizontal so you can see that it's not that loop there because that's going horizontal, it's actually this one here. Can look quite small. Okay, so there we go, that's our next row. And then to complete our set of rows, we do a reverse. So do that chain one first and then pull through two back to the beginning. So back to the beginning, you can see we've now created another set of vertical bars here. And you can really start seeing the stitches come together, the knit stitches and the purl stitches. So I'm going to follow that pattern one more time, one more set of rows, starting off with the knit stitch. I'm going to, so I'm going to do that one more time starting with knit stitches then we're going to alternate with starting with purl stitches so these can be quite small when they're on the purl stitches we just want to grab that one loop back to knit stitches So I shall repeat this for just one more set, going all the way across and then do a reverse row and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. I think you've probably guessed what comes next. <laughs> okay, so I finished that last reverse row and uh, here we go. This is our first set of three sets of rows, starting with knit stitches, three lots of purl stitches, all the way to the end. So now to get the basket weave, you could carry on this way and end up with a sort of ribbing following the same sequence. But if you want the basket weave, we're going to now start with a purl stitch. So again, we don't need to do anything for the very first vertical bar because we've got this loop. But we're going to go straight into, to a, straight into a purl stitch. So we're going to bring the yarn down and we're going to go under that second vertical bar here and just do a purl stitch. So we're going to grab the yarn, keeping it at the front, bring it under and just pull it slightly. And do that for the next one as well. We only do it for the first two because that first loop already counts as a purl stitch. Then move the yarn back up the top and we're going to do knit stitches now instead of purl stitches, these tiny little vertical bars. And then we're going to go to the back. I really just feel for that hole at the back. I mean, you can probably just about see the gap there we just go under then to the back 
three little knit stitches and then back to purl stitches and just alternate between doing the opposite of what you did the last time. So I'm going to do that for three lots of sets of rows and, uh, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And then back to knit stitches where those little pearl stitches were. And back to pearl stitches where you've got knit stitches. Then this time we're going to end on knit stitches instead of purl stitches. So let's go on to the next one, do a knit stitch. Go under that tiny little vertical bar to the back, grab the yarn, bring it to the right. And the very last one again, just make sure that it lines up so you can see exactly where that last vertical bar is. But to do a knit stitch, we basically just go through the stitch and just grab the yarn from the back because you can't really do a sort of proper knit stitch because the hole is just the end of the project. So. And there we go, we've done the opposite and then we just do a reverse row as normal, so do a chain one and then just pull through two until you get to the end. Just like before, so your reverse rows never change. Okay, back to the beginning. And there we go, we can see start seeing pearl stitches appearing above the knit stitches. So I'm going to do that for three, uh, two more sets of rows. And when I mean a set, I mean that's just going forward and then a reverse row back. So that's like one set, uh, but technically two rows. But I'm going to do two more sets of rows. So I'm going to go backwards, then reverse. Uh, I'm going to go forwards, then reverse, then forwards again and reverse. So we end up with three lots of these pearl stitches. I'm going to do that following the same pattern. So starting off with the pearl stitch, bringing the yarn down. And where's the first one? The first one can be a little bit hard to see. So sometimes you might need to stretch your project out so you can see where that vertical bar is. And there it is hiding. Careful just to go under one loop and not both loops. And start with the pearl stitch again. And there's our next one. Then going back to the knit stitches. So you can see these larger vertical bars. So I'm going to do that for two more sets of rows and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And then that's general, the general gist of how to do the basket weave stitch in sets of three. Okay, so there we go. I've repeated that for two more sets of rows and you can see now it's alternated between the purl stitches and the knit stitch. If I just zoom in there, you can see a little bit closer. And if you just repeat this over and over again, you'll eventually end up with something that looks like this. So this is in a different fabric uh, where the colour changes as you go along, but you can see alternating between the knit stitches and the cute little purl stitches. But this is different to knitting, obviously it looks very different on the back, this is what the back looks like. But if you'd like to learn to knit, if you've always felt that knitting was a challenge and you enjoy my teaching process, then do check out my knitting channel, Happy Berry Knitting. And we're going to be looking at this stitch soon for knitting, which is a little ribbing effect in knitting. So my cute little daughter's knitting needles. So we'll be looking at this soon, but there's lots of beginner knitting tutorials on there, starting from the real basic casting on and doing knit stitches and pearl stitches in knitting. But if you prefer to crochet and you like the knit knitting effect, then do uh, give this a try and hopefully Tunisian crochet will be a really good substitute. And I think it still creates a beautiful stretchy fabric like knitting does as well. And if you want to make this bigger and uh, you've only got the straight needles, you can get other Tunisian needles. You can get these ones that are about this length and you can screw in cables that are very very long it can carry a lot of stitches so there's lots of options as well but I hope you enjoyed that tutorial I hope you found it useful and I will see you soon for some more crochet fun thanks for watching guys bye